at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning to you. It is Monday. It is January 27th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. Can't believe we're almost in February. How was your weekend? It was actually terrific. I attended a baby shower, which is always fun. Seeing all the little bitty clothes and everybody's so happy. So it was a great weekend. How about yours? Not bad. Got a brisket successfully smoked. My second attempt. It this looked one delicious. It's far better than the first one. It's always nice when things start to fall apart in a good way. Yeah. So how long did it take you? Let's see. I smoked it from 7 a.m. to just about 5 p.m. Wow. That's mm. a long time. Well, a good one takes 12 to 18 hours or more. Well, it looked delicious. I saw pictures of it. Well, if you want coffee with your brisket, apparently we've all been making our coffee wrong, everybody. Oh, yeah. That's a good segue, too, because there is actually a coffee rub for many cuts of I've heard of that before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. We apparently, so there are wine snobs, there are coffee snobs. We know some of you out there are like, yeah, well, you, you've all been making it wrong because I know the right way. Well, there's a new study out. It was published just last week in the academic journal Matter. All right. They said, we as a society have been making espresso incorrectly for a while now. That's according to mathematicians and scientists across the world, everybody. This is like a lot of smart people. Yeah. So the authors claim coffee makers, both at home and even in cafes, are using too many beans and too fine a ground, resulting in, quote, wasted raw material and inconsistent flavor. They said, with our instruction form, our model, we have outlined a procedure to eliminate these shortcomings. An espresso shot that uses fewer beans and more coarse grind is how scientists claim consumers can eliminate waste and have more uniformity of flavor among shots while maintaining the strength of the coffee from a finer grind. So they call for 15 grams instead of 20 grams of coffee per shot. It will decrease the mass of coffee used per espresso by up to 20%, and it will have a significant economic impact and create more sustainable coffee-consuming future. That's right. Not everybody's on yeah. board, though. I mean, if you want to get down to the nitty-gritty of this, the uh, one barista said, the best extraction practices are extremely dependent on the origin of the coffee bean. This includes the presence of lactic acid based on elevation, fermentation of the coffee bean, husk or cherry, and how the washing process affects available sugars. That is down to the science of it, isn't it? All I care about is, does it have caffeine? Yeah, we sure hope so, right? That's important important part. Let's take a look at your rundown. The mayor of Los Angeles may have said it best. Kobe Bryant will live forever in our hearts and will be remembered as one of our greatest heroes. Fans have been sharing their grief overnight at memorials in Los Angeles, around the country, and across the globe. From the Spurs as they played yesterday afternoon against the Toronto Raptors. A moment of silence was held before the game started, and then both teams started the game making 24-second violations to honor Bryant, who wore number 24. John Alcabelli, a former University of Houston assistant coach, and his wife and daughter are also among the nine killed. Former National Security Advisor John Bolton, a new report by the New York Times shows just how critical to the case he may be. Times says Bolton detailed an August 2019 conversation with Trump, claiming the president told Bolton personally that he wanted to continue withholding military aid to the Ukraine until officials there launched investigations into Trump's rivals, including Joe Biden. Two men who police say were watching television have found themselves involved in a real-life drama. Someone shot them, firing, and to their north side apartment complex. Katrina Weber is live where it happened at West Avenue near Blanco, and you said one of the victims, rather, Katrina's in critical condition. One critical, one was stable. Both men taken to a hospital by ambulance. New cases in California and Arizona have now pushed the number of patients in the U.S. to five. Each of them traveled recently to the epicenter of the outbreak, Wuhan, China. San Antonio police have charged a man with intoxication manslaughter after a deadly crash on the west side this weekend. 18-year-old Stephen Medina was booked following the crash in the 3600 block of Claybrook yesterday. But the night truly belonged to Billie Eilish, who won all four of the big categories at the Grammys, running out of people to thank in her final acceptance speech. Congratulations, <laughs> Billie Eilish. <laughs> she is so talented. Yeah, she is. She has a, excuse me, I'm a little choked up here. I haven't seen much of her. I know she was on SNL this season as the musical guest. Yes, yeah, she's, uh, she's quite the artist. She is the up-and-comer. Let's up go outside with live cam right now as things are starting to warm up across South Texas. Justin Horn joined us now. Fair question for you as well, sir. How was your weekend? It was really nice. And not only that, I, I love the weather. We got up to 80 yesterday. That's warm for January. I think we may set some records here in January. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But 
for right now, it's a little chilly out there. 55 degrees at the airport, 54 Honda, 44 in Kerrville, 54 Rock Springs. We'll see a pretty rapid warm up today. It's going to be warm again, probably not as warm as yesterday, but warm nonetheless. Cold winds at this hour. There still was a little bit of fog out there. Let's check in on that. And we're seeing that mainly across our far eastern county. So places like Gonzales, Howitzville, Victoria, you are seeing some fog this morning should lift within the hour. Uh, that dense fog advisory uh, does include some of our eastern counties goes until 10 o'clock this morning. Meantime, pollen count is in mountain cedars in the high category jumped up from where it was over the weekend. Mold is low. That's down from where it was over the weekend. And your forecast for today, lots of sun up to 75 for a high, but we have rain chances kicking in tonight. A good chance for some showers and storms. We're going to time it out for you and talk about our next chance of rain coming up in just a few minutes. Guys. Thanks, Jester. Right now we've got a vehicle over on the side of the road, right shoulder 281 at Divine. We've got slow going and that appears to be, I was going to say that looks to be the inbound lanes of I-10. I'm fairly sure it is the southbound lanes of 281. Well, top stories that we're following for you today. It's been more than three years since a road rage incident on the city's north side ended with a man getting shot and killed. Now San Antonio police asking for people to help track down the people responsible. The incident happened back in November of 2016 near Hebner and Northwest Military. Police say 25 year old Gilbert Rocha was sitting in the back of an SUV when someone in another vehicle started shooting. One bullet hit and killed Rocha. Another injured the driver of the SUV that Rocha was in. If you have any information that could help investigators, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. A cash reward is being offered for information that leads to an arrest. Seems hard to believe, but primary season is almost here. We're only 36 days away from Super Tuesday, and if you have not registered to vote, you need to hurry. Here are some important dates that you need to know about. The last day to register in Texas is next Monday, February 3rd. Monday is also the first primary in Iowa. Early voting in Texas will open February 18th through the 28th, and the primary takes place on March the 3rd. If you have any questions about the primaries, like what's on the ballot or how to register, go to our website, ksat.com. And in your morning headlines, we have video of a deadly plane crash in Florida. There was a very scary landing of a passenger plane in Iran. An incredible rescue from the tracks of a metro in D.C. And police officer using daddy skills to help a little girl in a car accident. David Sears, good to see you here Hi, back with David. us this morning. Good, good morning. morning. We're talking about people being in the right place at the right time mm -hmm. this morning. A little bit of that coming up. All right, you're looking at the results of a plane crash in a neighborhood in Florida. The pilot killed. He was the only one on board, and when the plane hit the ground, burst into flames, fire spread to a house. No one was hurt in the home, and there were no other injuries reported on the ground. The pilot was taking off from an airport just about a half a mile away. Officials believe he was actually headed to Texas when that plane went down. Overseas, that is an Iranian passenger jet liner off the end of the runway. The jet made a hard landing, lost a landing gear, then slid off the end of that runway. All 150 passengers on board were okay. They were all helped to the ground through the front door, and door over the wing to make the incident even a little scarier. The plane stopped just short of a populated area and a pretty incredible rescue taking place a couple of days ago by firefighters in Washington, D.C. A woman had a medical episode fell off the Metro train platform as a train was approaching. Firefighters had a couple of different situations to deal with. First, the woman was injured. She was bloody, covered with dust. So the rescue workers were lying on that platform, talking to the woman to keep her calm. One rescue even holding her hand for reassurance. The other problem, the train tracks themselves. Keeping her calm, keeping her away from the train, making sure she didn't touch anything because the train was still energized at that point. The main thing that saved uh, this patient was the safe haven zone underneath the rail platform. Yeah, they finally got that power shut off and the woman was rescued. She was taken to a local hospital with serious but non-life-threatening injuries. And finally this morning, an example of just how important it is for our police officers to be well-rounded. In Nebraska, a car with a family slid off into a ditch. When an officer arrived, he realized he had to get a little girl through a scary situation. So the officer took her mind off of things by talking to her about some of the characters from Frozen while he strapped her into that car seat. Is that Elsa? Yeah. Is it? Yeah, he knows Anna. Elsa. Oh, I do. I know Elsa, Princess Anna, Olaf. And Prince Olaf and Sven. Oh, I love Sven. I love Sven. He's a talking no me. He is. That's Olaf, ain't it? So at that time, I don't think he was a police officer. I think he was just dad. Yeah, he, just taking care of a little girl and Aww. strapping her in the seat and talking about 
frozen. Yeah, well, he kept it calm, so yeah. that made her calm as well. That's and so sweet. Another uh, another reason to have those body cams so we can see all that good stuff they do. It does sure. definitely helps tell the Isn't story. That amazing. Yep. Such sweet video. I love <laughs> that. And David, it's good to have you back. Thank you. Good to be here. We'll Ooh. be talking sports stuff a little later. A little later uh, sad on. Sad yeah. news. Yeah. Kobe, some Kobe stuff and, and talk a little bit about his last trip here to San Antonio. I know. When I hear he your retired. perspective. Yeah. I Saw love your, that picture you posted. Yeah. There's yeah. a good picture yeah. of you and Kobe together there. He's a good guy. More to come right now. 908, 55 degrees. A lifetime of free groceries, cheating the system with a fake skeleton, and the world's worst cat is up for adoption. We're going to check in with Erica and RJ for details on those trending stories. And people around the world still mourning the loss of Kobe Bryant. How the Spurs and Raptors paid tribute to the basketball legend. That's later in the newscast. Good morning, guys. I'm Max Massey. It is National Blood Donor Month. We're going to tell you how to donate, how easy it is, and why it's so important. And the coronavirus has stunned world markets, including the Dow, the New York Stock Exchange. As we speak, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is down over 400 points. It was down over 500 a little bit earlier. Right now, it's at 28,565. Your time now, 12 minutes after 9. Every two seconds, someone needs blood. And in San Antonio, local hospitals are asking for your help. It's National Blood Donor Month, and our KSAT community partner, University Health, is hosting an annual blood drive. Max Massey joins us live at University Hospital. Max, good morning, and what's the situation out there right now? Hi, Max. Good morning, guys. Well, the doors open at 8.30 a.m. They've already had a handful of donors. Take a look behind me. You can already see people out and about doing what they have to do. We are joined by Deborah Serna. So can you tell people how easy it is to come out and donate? Um, it's really easy. We actually have you fill out a form. So you answer questions about your medical history, travel history, that kind of thing. And then we do a physical screen where we take your vitals, check your iron to make sure you have enough to donate. Okay. Then after that, the whole process? The whole process takes about 15 to 20 minutes, and the actual blood donation only takes about 10 minutes, Great. so it's really quick. Any side effects people should be wary of? Just to hydrate and for the next 24 hours not do anything strenuous. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a cookie real quick. Of course. Guys, you get a little present after you donate, yes. and also some juice. Juice and cookies if you like it, and we also are giving out our um, 2020 t-shirts, so you get that for your first donation of the year. Perfect. So even after saving lives... You get a reward. You get, yes, nice cookie and juice. All right, so where and when can people donate? Okay, so we're here until 7 p.m. today, and then tomorrow and the rest of the week, 8.30 to 5 p.m. here in the donor room. They can also go to our off-site blood drive on Friday, the 31st, at our downtown Robert B. Green Clinic from 10 to 4. Perfect, Deborah, thank you so much. Thank you. And if you guys have any questions, we have all of that information right now on KSAT.com. Mark, Leslie. All right, thank you very much, Max. Justin Horn joins us back here at the desk. Good to have you here on a Monday morning, sir. Glad to be here. It got warm yesterday. It was really warm. Up to 80 degrees. That is above average. Not a record, but above average nonetheless. And I think January is going to end up pretty interesting in the record books in the sense that we haven't had a freeze. That's rare. That mm -hmm. has not happened, in fact, since 1939. Let's take a look wow. at the month of January. We've been above average just about every day except for four we're averaging 58.4 if you average in all the temperatures. The warmest on record is 62. That was back in 1923. We probably won't get there. We're going to have some below average days, I think, coming up. But that interesting stat that we're not going to hit freezing, at least it's not in the forecast to the end of January. And that will be the first time that we did not have freezing temperatures in January since 1939. Pretty incredible. High temperatures today up around 75 here in San Antonio. We'll see some 80s off to the south and west. All in all, pretty warm day once again, just not as warm as yesterday. Here is a look at the time lapse. It was a beautiful sunrise this morning. We had clear skies. It was kind of in interesting too because you could almost see that, that uh, fog way off in the distance there as the sun came up. We didn't have it here in San Antonio, but our friends off to the east certainly did. Visibilities have been down in spots. We're at 55 degrees here in town. Still some 40s on the map. Comfort 45, 48, Bernie stage. Yeah, you may need your coat for a couple of, another couple of hours. I think you can lose it this afternoon as those temperatures return to the 70s. Visible satellite picture here uh, doesn't show anything across San Antonio, but we are picking up on those low clouds and fog off to the east. So you can see almost exactly where that line is just to the west of Gonzales, and then it stretches over towards Howitzville, Victoria. Those are the areas that are going to see fog for at least a little while longer. Visibility is down about a quarter of a mile down to a mile in Victoria. 
everybody else in good shape. Here's the big picture across Texas. You'll notice there's nothing going on. We're going to see sunny skies today, but there is uh, some shower and uh, snow activity out there to the west. There's a long stretched out area of low pressure or trough that's moving across the country. And that is going to move in our direction. We can see it here at water vapor pretty nicely. There is some energy with that. It's going to be a quick mover, but it'll be here tonight. And there is just enough moisture to work with where we should get some showers and storms overnight. So here's what the computer models are showing. By 5 o'clock, most of the activity still off to our west. We've got sunny skies here across South Texas. But by midnight, here comes uh, some of those showers. And yes, there could be some thunderstorms with this. There's just enough energy upstairs where that could happen. So Hill Country, midnight, we'll have to watch out for a few of those storms. This progresses east by 4 a.m., probably on our doorstep here in San Antonio. And then by 7 o'clock, it's probably through. So the morning commute still could be a little bit wet, but I think the bulk of the activity is starting to move east by then. And then by noontime tomorrow, cloud cover starting to break up. We're back in the sun again, and we'll see a pretty nice afternoon on your Tuesday. Here's the forecast for today. Sunny to start at least, 75, and then increasing clouds tonight as those rain chances kick in. We'll call for about a 60% chance of rain temperatures in the 50s. I uh, don't know that we'll see a whole lot of rainfall, but again, there could be some rumbles of thunder with that. 72 coming up uh, tomorrow and then 61 Wednesday. Another 40% chance of rain Thursday and uh, it will be quite a bit cooler by then. We'll see some cooler air working in and with the clouds and the rain, probably drawing temperatures down a little bit, but some decent shots at some Measurable rainfall. We like that and the weekend looks fantastic. We're going to clear out just in time for the weekend. The timing has worked out great this year. I love it. Thank you so much, Justin. Yep. 917, 55 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, would you adopt the world's worst cat? And how would you like to win free groceries for the rest of your life? Erica and RJ have details on those trending stories coming up next. As we go to break, quick check of the roads with Transguide. And we've got a major accident. 35 at Weedner appears to be affecting southbound lanes. Fire and EMS are on scene. Welcome back. 921. Plenty trending on KSAT.com over the weekend and this morning, including a story about how someone can win free groceries from HEB for life. That sounds like a pretty good deal. Yeah. Oh, yeah. RJ Marquez and Eric Hernandez join us now with details on that. Tell me how we do it. Okay, this is a. Yeah, mention? this is a. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's, some, there's some steps. Uh oh. You gotta follow, so. It's not just click. Yeah, no, you no can't pad. just. No, yeah. Not. Can you start writing notes? <laughs> yeah. So, this, like, of course, sounds amazing. Free groceries for your entire life. Yeah, so HEB, with the help of Eva Longoria, wants to give one lucky shopper that amazing prize. The grocery store released its teaser commercial for this year's Super Bowl commercial, the longer one, saying it will air during the second half of the game. Now, Longoria stars in the 15-second teaser and tells viewers to download the My HEB app in order to enter the contest. HEB said in a news release that shoppers will have to play a game on the app for a chance to win the lifetime supply. Yeah, so once you beat the game, you will be entered in the contest and a winner will get chosen at random and you can only enter once, of course. This all begins once the commercial airs, so on the game, once it airs and it runs through February 16th and the winner will be notified by email. So um, we all have to download the app and you have to play a game yeah, starting on, on Super Bowl app. Sunday after it yes. airs and you only have until the 16th to beat the game, and, and if you beat the game, they and, enter you randomly and choose. Wow, that's good. You took yeah, good notes. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's it. That's That was that's all exactly of it. exactly it. I got this. It's going to get a lot of yeah. uh, app downloads. But can you imagine? <laughs> Go I already, I already have the app. I'm going to do it. Why not? Well, I mean, that's amazing. To that lucky person, I'm... Yeah. I'm yeah. sure, though, everybody's grocery shopping list is a little bit different, so there's probably like a limit to how much you spend. That's Anything helps. Yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah. No, I'm not <laughs> so, yeah, I'll sure. yeah. Yep. So moving on now. Next up, a 62-year-old Arizona man got in some trouble recently after trying to disguise a fake skeleton as a passenger just to use the HOV lane. Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> Look at this guy right there. Uh, the Arizona Department of Public Safety pulled him over last week and noticed the fake skeleton in the passenger seat. The skeleton was tied to the front seat and wearing a hat. The Arizona Department of Public Safety said this isn't the first time they cite HOV lane violators. In fact, 7,000 people are cited oh, a year. 7,000? 7, 
thousand. That's a lot yeah. of people. So a lot of people oh. violating the HOV lanes laws there, and I'm sure that's the same here in Texas when they I've have those places. But yeah, I've seen this, especially up in uh, the Dallas area. They have the toll roads there. Yeah. California's got a bunch of them. But uh, yeah, I, why this skeleton? I mean, <laughs> this guy just had this. <laughs> this Playing like around Halloween for Halloween right? and tied it up to the seat. And... <laughs> okay, I mean, how many times have we that reported on this kind of stuff? Oh like, yeah, like, dummies in it or big stuffed animals. It never works. This stuff happens, They're gonna get yeah. caught. Yeah, the drivers yeah. not worth the ticket. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> and finally, this is probably the, the best story. An animal rescue organization in North Carolina trending this morning because they say they have the world's worst cat and it's up for adoption. Yeah, the shelter is waiving adoption fees in hopes that someone will take the cat named Perdita off their hands. In a Facebook post, the shelter says, quote, we thought she was sick. Turns out she's just a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> her profile describes her as a foul-tempered feline that dislikes dogs, children, Disney movies, Christmas, and last but not least, hugs. hugs. Her Facebook post has drawn thousands of likes and more than 50 applications have been made yeah. already to adopt her. But... There's a there's one photo that's in this article where she's just sitting there with this look. So and she's just a feline with an attitude. <laughs> yeah, I, apparently. No, my daughter and my husband are both allergic oh, to cats, okay. so that cannot mm, happen. Yeah. yeah. But um, apparently, there's been a ton of applications for this, and whoever's running their social media props. It's to them, all, yeah, it's yeah, really creative. Yeah, they said uh, I've printed something out that says that Perdita enjoys jump scaring people and <laughs> slapping anyone who tries to pet her and staring into your soul until Ooh. you feel as if you may never be cheerful again. <laughs> That's okay. Hey, All right. a ton of, yeah, it's applications. Very so cat. you need really <laughs> thick skin to own this cat. <laughs> yeah. But there's somebody out there. Somebody. Yeah, got it, there's yeah. always, a, you know, an animal for somebody. She's, she's going to find her forever home. Oh, Perdita. I think so. Wow. wow. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now to your national days of the week. Today is National Chocolate Cake Day and Bubble Wrap Day. Oh, I right. love Bubble Wrap Day. <laughs> yes. Uh, tomorrow we have National Half Fun at Work Day, and Wednesday is National Corn Chip Day. Thursday is National Croissant Day. Friday is the last day of the month, and it's National Hot Chocolate Day if it gets cold. Yeah. Uh, Saturday is National Ice Cream Day for Breakfast Day. And Sunday is National Tater Tot Day, and of course that other game going on. Right, I was going to say perfect tater tots uh, for the Super Bowl. Put some cheese you know? over there. Little finger food. Mm. <laughs> we just had a recipe for that, a fondue over potatoes on the show before us. Good Morning America. It looked Ooh, really good. Nice. Oh. Yeah. No. yeah. Good stuff. All that on KSI.com. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Right now, we're at 926, 55 degrees. San Antonio Spurs only have a few home games left before their rodeo road trip. Silver and Black couldn't get it done last night against the Raptors. We have the highlights coming up. And the world is mourning the loss of basketball legend Kobe Bryant. David and RJ are back to help us remember Kobe's life and legacy. That is coming up next. And checking the roads once again, we have a problem at I-35 at Weedner. Still have those lanes blocked. It's uh, very slow going in that area. They're working to clear the scene, but it's a problem. COVID? Oh, that's, we're, yeah, talking we're talking about it. 930, that. welcome that's back. Tragic loss hey, of Kobe Bryant. Yes, we are. David and RJ here now for a look at the weekend sports, and that goes without saying that we're all uh, feeling uh, loss of this uh, NBA legend today, who is uh, forever intertwined now with uh, Spurs lore, that yeah. legendary rivalry. Yeah. yeah, that's what we were talking about as we were coming mm -hmm. back from break. I mean, we used to love to go watch oh, him yeah. and Shaq take on our Spurs, and you know, it, it was, was. I think we, we figured out over a 10-year period, seven of those 10 years, it was either the Lakers or the Spurs who won the NBA championship, which means they did battles. In the regular season, they did battles in the playoffs over those years, and they were they were they were epic. Yeah, they Absolutely were. Absolutely epic. Yeah. She I mean, uh, just uh, yeah, just that whole decade was pretty much dominated by the Spurs and the Lakers. And anytime you thought of the NBA, uh, it was the Spurs big three, Coach Pop and Shaq, Kobe, Phil Jackson. I mean, that yeah. was it. That was it, yeah. really, for that entire uh, decade of dominance for those two teams. And it's such a moment in time that I think we and all look back. Even at though he played long. for the Lakers, of course, yes. Yes. it was so fun to watch him on the court. He, well, and he was he was a competitor, and he would he would he was the one that would not only beat you, but he would step on your throat as he beat you, <laughs> just to make sure you were down and out. Yes. He would he would not hesitate. It Talk wasn't like I'm gonna let you get up and and you know have some fun. No, Talk no, no, no. about that picture that you posted to uh, you and Kobe. This was the last time that Kobe was in San Antonio mm -hmm. playing. He he retired in 2016, and this was his last game here in San Antonio. And he was walking to the bus, and I just hollered at him and said, "Hey, Kobe." And he goes. Kobe never knew my name, mm -hmm. but we had been together so many times at practice facilities. Because <laughs> yeah. I always ended up covering the Lakers. Mark Mendez and I always went to the Lakers 
uh, practice before the playoffs, or and we went out there and covered the Lakers many times, just in the regular so season. So he knew your face, person. just not your so name. So he knew who I was. Mm -hmm. He knew my face. He just called me San Antonio. So, hey, San Antonio, <laughs> what's up? And, and I'll tell you a, a quick story about about sure. what kind of guy he was. Okay. We cover the Spurs in L.A. We go in the Spurs locker room, get all our interviews. We head over to the Laker locker room just to see if anybody's left in the Lakers locker room, and it was it was empty. There wasn't a soul in there. And we got ready to leave, and all of a sudden, Kobe comes out from one of the training rooms. And he said, hey, what's going on? How you guys doing? What do you need? What can I do for you? I said, Kobe, I said, I know you're headed out. I said, do you mind if I ask you a couple? Nah, man, whatever you want. Go ahead. Fire away. There wasn't anybody in there. There wasn't any PR people in there. There wasn't any assistant coaches so in there. So he didn't there. have wasn't to do it. There wasn't any other players. So he didn't have to do it. He could have said, no, nah, I don't have time to walk out the door. He stood there and ans answered, I don't know, I probably had four or five questions for him. But, I mean, that's the kind of guy he was. Saw him in Detroit, I mean, in Denver at an all-star game. He stopped and talked to us, me and Mark. We were sitting at a table, and he knew Mark because Mark was always with me. We were always there. So, hey, how y'all doing? And he, yeah. he was just walking by, just stopped and talking. But that's the, the kind faces. of guy he was. Um, yeah, we saw some images there of Kobe when uh, his final game here in San Antonio. And you remember that tribute video that the Spurs did. We've seen a lot of these tribute videos. Now you're seeing the images there. Um, but I thought what stood out about that was that it was Tim, Tony, Manu, and Coach Pop. And they were all talking about this one individual who they admired, they respected over the years. And in what other situation are you going to get those three and Coach Pop to talk about another player and an opponent like that? So I thought that was great to see. These are images that uh, we took actually here at KSAT of Kobe's uh, last game here when he talked to the media before yeah. the game. Yeah, I mean, where else do you see that too? I think Dirk maybe last year, Dirk yeah. post game, but there for Kobe, yeah, Kobe. 15, 20 minutes? Yeah. The 24 seconds that both teams took to pay mm -hmm. to honor his memory. Well, he had he wore eight and he wore 24 and I think the 24 is pretty much more iconic than the eight for him and so the Spurs yesterday and the Toronto Raptors decided that they would pay tribute to him by letting the clock run out the shot clock is a 24 second shot clock right so they let it run out whoever got the ball first let it run out and then the Spurs Toronto got the ball first so then the Spurs got the ball and then they just they just let the, the clock run out for 24 seconds and you could see tears from the players on the floor. DeMar DeRozan came out pretty late, didn't even warm up. But uh, there were shots of Becky, Hammond, and Tim, and all them just getting very emotional about this, uh, this whole moment here. Um, some teams also did an eight-second midcourt violation yeah. later, on, later on as the day went on. And this was, you could see Becky uh, tearing up there. Yeah. This was a, it was, a, it was a strange situation because this game was the first one after the news That's broke. And, and. You know, as, as big as a rivalry as it was, I always thought that their fans and our fans respected both teams. Absolutely. Our fans respected the Lakers, and is, even though we, we hated the Lakers because they were the Lakers, but there was a lot of respect for them. And so even the fans, you could hear the chant of Kobe, 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 which made it, you would think well, they were it, in L.A., but they were actually here in our It was a fun rivalry that, with so. them. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. great stuff. You know, Shaq yeah, would always talk. Smack Trash. about here, and yeah. I, yeah. you know, it was, it's just it was so shocking. Yeah, it was, it was great stuff. Yeah, it was. That and was, it, it, like, especially when you think about the fact he was with his daughter, and then we have the other victims, the other uh, nine total that we heard from the LA, uh, the county sheriff there. So, I mean, I think that just makes it that much more devastating. Yeah. Kobe, we've seen a lot of videos with yeah. Kobe and his daughter on the sidelines of Spurs. And they were all you know, going to a basketball game. They're yeah. all involved in, in his basketball team that he had at this academy, and that's all those victims were were were, were associated with it somehow. Well, it's so. even more bittersweet. He had just yeah. commented about LeBron passing him, yeah. become the third all-time. Yeah. score in the league yeah. right but that's what that's that's the kind of guy he was I mean he was one of the first to tweet mm -hmm. you know congratulations to, to LeBron and I mean it he was, was super smart too like I didn't know he spoke all these languages yeah. and all these he's he was, really a brilliant and remember guy. he didn't go to college yeah he came to the NBA right yeah. out of, right out of high school he got life um, lessons yeah so also, uh, he won an Academy Award That's for right. a uh, documentary last His year. His reaction it, was right, amazing. Yeah, the Academy Award had that as well. And also, uh, yeah, as we said, we saw him kind of grow up. I mean, yeah. it, from high school, you knew that he was this sort of like uh, phenom. So we saw a lot of Kobe's career. So so to speak. And then, of course, the Spurs played a game after, but it was almost insignificant. Right. I mean, they tried to play the Toronto Raptors, and I guess the Toronto Raptors tried to play the Spurs, and it was just like, why? God, it was almost one of those things. Why are we going through this? But it was, it was all, you know, a tough night. It was just, yeah, it was just a tough across, night across the board. Over, so. He was only forty-one. So only yeah. forty-one. God, he was just starting. But but think about the the career he had because he came into the league at at such a young age, and he's retired and was only forty-one. But then you look back at this amazing career over mm -hmm. over a whole what, body of work. Years, it's like man, and he's only so much more to do. Forty-one that. and retired. Yeah.
So we talked about the so. game here. Uh, Spurs did lose. Uh, DeMar DeRozan spoke afterwards about uh, Kobe Bryant. Let's hear what uh, DeMar had to say. Words can't explain it, man. Um, for myself, learning everything I've, I've learned basketball-wise from Kobe, what he meant to the game, the inspiration that he brought to the world. Um, not just that, um, his daughter. I'm a father. Um, I can't imagine something like that, you know, happening. I mean, it's, it's a sad, sad, very sad, sad day. Very and, sad day. And that, that was pretty much the reaction from just about yeah. everybody across the league and even across the country. And he was so iconic across the world. I mean, you, you remember some of the icons, Michael Jackson, when he passed away, the reaction. I mean, not to compare him to Michael Jackson, but, but that's how big he is across the oh, world. Absolutely. He's huge in China. Yeah. He's huge yeah. overseas. But, I mean, this, the world lost, lost, lost a, a great basketball player. Tried and a great get, person. And a great but, person. Get back to normal tonight. Uh, Spurs, Spurs in Chicago. Uh, in Chicago. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They've, uh, Spurs had a couple of losses here at home. So Do they have – uh, where are they in the yeah. standings right now? Uh, I think they're nine, uh, full oh. game out now. Spot, of, so, uh, yeah. yeah. So we'll so we'll the real, real quick, one more thing. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark Cuban – announced yeah. yesterday that nobody for the Mavericks will ever wear 24 again. So it'll be interesting to see what the NBA does. If they decide maybe they're just going to retire that number. Right. And nobody in the NBA will I, ever wear 24 again. I can see it. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, they'll do something, but it'll be interesting to see what they do. Guys, they thanks for coming in, sharing yeah, yeah. your stories. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Let's go outside with live cam. Justin is joining us now with a look at your forecast. Another warm day on tap. Another warm day. And let me say one more thing, too. For Magic Johnson to call him the greatest Laker that ever played, that's a huge statement there from coming from Magic Johnson. Uh, anyway, outside, you saw it there. We've got uh, sunny skies here in San Antonio. Clouds, though, off to our east. We've had a little bit of fog off to our east, too. We're watching that closely on the satellite picture, and let me show it to you here. You can see where those clouds line up. Just to the west of Gonzales, you'll notice they're trying to work their way west a little bit. I don't think they'll make it to San Antonio, but places like Seguin and uh, places like Lavernia, you may start to see some clouds here over the next couple of hours. They shouldn't last very long. I think most of us will see sun, quite a bit of it this afternoon, but visibility is still close to zero in Gonzales, so take precaution there. There still is a dense fog advisory that goes until 10 o'clock, so another 20 minutes or so, and that could get extended just based on what we're seeing there. You see where it lines up, basically our eastern counties, and that's where the fog has been the thickest. Forecast looks like this. 75 this afternoon, sunny skies. We'll see northwesterly winds become southeasterly. That'll bring in a little bit of moisture out ahead of our next storm system. And we've got rain chances tonight. So, yes, it's sunny today, but tonight a decent chance of some showers and storms. Temperatures in the 50s and a 60% shot at some rain. That clears out by tomorrow morning. Then we've got another chance for rain after that. We'll talk more about that forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. Thank you, Justin. Right now, we've still got that incident 35 South at Weedner. They are starting to clear things out. This should be moving off shortly now. Fire has moved on. Looks like we've got one or more vehicles up on the wrecker. Uh, expect things to start to clear up in the next 10 minutes or so. All right, this was very interesting. Um, uh, we enjoy wine, right? We do. And, you know, fine wines are aged in barrels, and there's all these great things that they do to make them taste yummy. I've never heard of this before. This We've got a sinking feeling about this one. <laughs> Crusoe treasures and wines do not mature in a chilled cellar. Instead, they are submerged 65 feet down in the sea. Bottles spent up to 18 months under the waves with starfish and crabs as company. This is so incredible. Okay, so they, this is from the owner and the founder. We're a winery which started because we love the sea and we wanted to see if we could produce wine underneath it. It was almost by accident. Sriracha, who's 46 years old, who is the one who um, is the founder, he didn't even like wine before he started the company in 2013. So it's imagine it, it's exactly what we're going to describe here. If you, you can kind of put that into your mind uh, with the aid of a small crane, sealed crates containing hundreds of bottles are lowered into the sea from a boat into a bay uh, in the Basque country of northern Spain. I, can we pull up uh, any pictures of these? No, not we couldn't find any. Oh, I wish I could show you. It's, they're, it's, it's incredible. But these submarine venters, they're targeting the American market now. Right now they're for sale in Switzerland, Belgium, Mexico, Germany, Scandinavia, China, Japan, and Taiwan. But now they're coming after the American market. Yeah. They sold about 551,000 
bottles, which doubled from 2018 last year. They only produce 20,000 bottles a year, which is a drop in the ocean, ha, 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 compared to most winemakers. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. How much do they go for, You maybe you're wondering? They uh, vary in price. Let's see here, $65 to $109. They do come with a little bit of moss and ocean debris on them. That's it. That's part of the whole yeah, I say maturing the wine under waves in total darkness with temperatures between 54 and 65 degrees, aided by the gentle movement of the sea, improves the taste. Crusoe, uh, so what's that name again? Crusoe. Crusoe, I don't know. Uh, I just it? I had it here. Crusoe Treasures. Yes, look, look it up. Crusoe Treasures. So I think that would be a fun thing to have. Great gift to give someone. Right, it's truly unique. Yeah. 942, 55 degrees. So to come on GMSA at 9. Last year, University Health System transfused over 30,000 units of blood. University Hospital hoping you can help them rebuild their stock of blood. After the break, we're going to check back in with Max Massey. He's live with details on this week's Blood Drive. Welcome back, everybody. It's 946. You can help save a life today. It's National Blood Donor Month, and our case at community partner, University Health System, is hosting blood drives this week. Mr. Max Massey joined us live from University Hospital. Max, how easy is it to donate? Just kind of help us remember here. Good morning, guys. Well, it's a quick questionnaire, and then there is a physical screening. Then you actually get to donate blood. The whole process, including donating, takes only about 30 minutes. Now, we are joined here by Dr. Leslie Grieven. So, doctor, can you explain why people should come out and donate today? They should donate because it's ne necessary to have a lot of different blood donors for to supply our hospitals every single day. So we need a constant supply. Okay. What kind of patients need these blood transfusions? Uh, we have trauma patients. We have also oncology patients that have different diseases. And so they require, if they're on chemotherapy, sometimes their blood counts will go really low and they need all different types of blood products. If someone was kind of on the edge, like, do I donate, do I not? What would you say to them? I would say definitely you need to donate. You need to come in and see if you're eligible because you can save a person's life. Okay. Where can people donate? Um, we're here at University Hospital if you want to donate with us. And we're located inside University Hospital on the third floor. All right, perfect. Thank you so much. If you guys have any questions or where, when to donate, we have all that information right now on ksat.com. And after you donate, you get a cookie, you get a juice. You could be eligible for a T-shirt and movie passes, too. So no excuses. Mark, Leslie. That's a good deal. You movie have our passes attention. Too. Yeah. All right, thanks, Max. Justin's back with us now, looking ahead to our work weekend. It has been a, a very mild month of January. Very mild. I do think we'll get some cooler temperatures next week, but still not, not freezing. Arctic cold. No, it's not parka weather or anything like that. Uh, today's going to be a bit deceiving, though, because we're going to get some sun early, and then tonight we could actually see some thunderstorms. So don't hmm. be surprised if in the middle of the night you get woken up by some thunder. Okay. Uh, let's take a look at the satellite picture. Here's the setup. We were watching the fog this morning. It was it's still actually really thick off to the east, but we've also got this cloud deck that is uh, slowly creeping off to the west. And so places like uh, Seguin, as we mentioned earlier, those clouds are just on your doorstep. You may see some of those New Braunfels, uh, places like Lavernia, Floresville. If these clouds can move a little bit further west, you may see some clouds for a brief time this morning. Then sun comes back out. I think we're seeing plenty of sun here in San Antonio. Uh, temperatures 50s for the most part. We're still seeing a few 40s though. Junctions at 42, 48 right now in Eagle Pass. Mid 50s here in town across Bear County. Uh, 53 at Randolph. 55 down there in Pleasanton. 59 right now in Castroville. And they're looking at the visibility still close to zero in Gonzales. So this is the problem area here. Our far eastern counties, Lagrange, Victoria, Howitzville, uh, back down towards Beville, Cuero. That's where fog's still going to be there. I would imagine. Uh, within the next hour at least, uh, we should see this lift. Uh, we still do have that dense fog advisory in effect that goes through 10 o'clock. Now, visibility stays low in Gonzales. I would not be surprised if that gets extended. Out here in San Antonio, we've got clear skies. 55 degrees at the airport, as we mentioned. 55 stints in. Winds right now out of the north, northeast. They'll switch around to the southeast later today. That starts the process of bringing back in a little bit more moisture, which should help us with the chance for rain tonight. Uh, around the area, 50s, uh, New Braunfels, 50, Canyon Lake, 52, Floresville, 61 right now in Divine, one of the warmer spots, and we'll see high temperatures today in the mid-70s. Now, not as warm as yesterday. We got up to 80 on Sunday, uh, but this is still warm nonetheless and well above average, and we will see some 80s on the map down to the south and west. Big picture here across Texas, you'll notice there is nothing to see yet. We do see though, some showers and some snow showers up there across parts of New Mexico. That is our next storm system. 
and it's this elongated piece of energy that's moving through. It's a quick mover, so that's why we're just focusing on tonight really for those uh, rain chances. We've got storm system number one here, rainmaker number one. Our next one is back out here over parts of the Pacific. This one will be moving in Thursday. It'll give us another shot for some rain. So we're doing okay here with these storm systems uh, coming in about every three to four days or so. But here's what the uh, forecast looks like tonight. So let's fast forward to midnight. Uh, we'll start to see the clouds increasing and we'll start to see some showers, maybe a couple thunderstorms, I think across the hill country by midnight. And then by say two, three, four o'clock, it's moving towards San Antonio. Broken line of showers and storms. Again, there could be some rumbles and thunder in there. We're not looking for severe weather, but a lightning strike possible. Uh, by tomorrow morning, a lot of this is starting to move east of San Antonio. So the road still could be wet for the commute, but maybe a lot of the heavy rain is out of here. I uh, would time out pretty well. And then by midday, the rain is certainly off to our east. We're still holding on to a few clouds, but the sun returns Tuesday afternoon. Uh, forecast for today, up around 75 increasing clouds later tonight and then tomorrow or I should say tonight we have 60% chance of showers and storms temperatures in the 50s and then tomorrow 72 61 Wednesday and then that next system moves in and notice it's quite a bit cooler we've lowered temperatures Thursday and Friday has potential to be sort of the one of those damp pre cool days with uh, highs only in the 50s all right beautiful weekend mm -hmm. Uh, we do have some breaking news as we had to break. Sad news to report. The Air Force is reporting now that one of our jets has crashed in a mountainous Taliban held region of Afghanistan. Uh, we know there were no survivors so far. We're hearing there were two pilots on board that plane. Don't know the details surrounding why it went down. But again, this is happening in Afghanistan a little bit earlier today. Identified as an E-11, I believe. An E-11. Which is some kind of a command center plane. Yeah, it's basically like a, what would essentially be like a corporate jet. It's used as some sort of command. Uh, Control Com communications communications yeah. um, hub in the sky. So again, we're waiting for more information from the U.S. Air Force on this fatal crash in Afghanistan. Your time now 952. We'll be right back. Looking for an unusual, unique idea for Valentine's Day? And that's right around the corner. You walk into HEB, Valentine's stuff everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> if you're looking for something and you're an animal lover, well, the zoo has a special treat for you. That's right. Uh, we've got this story right now on our website at KSAT.com. Wild at heart, four-course meal, glass of wine, front row seat to the Africa Live exhibit. It's a Zunique experience, 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. on Valentine's Day. Tables for VIP se seating which directly next to the hippo viewing window have sold out at 125 a person. That's right. So the reservations can be made for either the 530 or the 730 seating. Oh, there's two seatings. Yes, gotcha. ma'am. Yeah, thank you $90 for that. a person. But as you said, that VIP one, sorry. I know. If you're wondering what it is, it's a four-course meal, salad, fried calamari, stuffed mushrooms, uh, veal, also buku, buku, four cheese ravioli, seared. Oh, we're out of time. Barramundi. Yeah. Which is supposed to be a really good fish. But you don't eat fish. <laughs> no, I don't. So she'll pick those up, Buko. Bye-bye.